Welcome! Aloha! Konnichiwa! I don't know what I'm doing or why I'm saying it, but I am here. Welcome to the new-ish setup. It's not a new setup. I'm just using this. I couldn't find a whiteboard, so I'm... Do I look really tired? Because I am. No, I'm actually not. I just woke up, though. Um, rise and grind, am I right? You ever thought about that? Rise and grind? That could have many different meanings. Okay, so today, a philosophical quandary. I, I, don't, I don't know. Quant question. Uh, qu quite a uh, dilemma. Um, I don't know what to call it. It's a philosophical problem. So, uh, I've found this philosophical theological problem based on some heated, dis heated discussions um, with my parents. Um, just about, you know, God and uh, philosophy and a lot of other things. And as a lot of you know, they're pastors, and so our conversations are very interesting. Me being super skeptical, atheistic, agnostic, and them obviously being pastors. So, we found this uh, very controversial uh, philosophical theological dilemma that I wanted to talk to you guys about today because I never realized it until I had this discussion with my parents and I'm going to show you using this by the way I draw like a three-year-old so you're welcome but here is the philosophical dilemma and I'm gonna here's here's the question at hand and then I'm, I'm gonna pick it apart and explain it a bit more is can God be all-knowing the God of the Bible and humans have free will at the same time. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, yes, of course, but there's a dilemma here. So, <laughs> help me. Now I'm awake. That was the morning cup of coffee right there. So if we look at our life being a timeline, right? Like a, like a tree. This is how I always envision it. So if we, God, this is gonna be the worst tree ever oh man this is this is something else let me tell you all right so that's my tree yeah i know i told you i drew like a three-year-old so you're welcome um so let's say you are born here right that that is birth and you die somewhere in, here you know in, in in one of these these places so, uh, uh, yeah, so this is the timeline. So obviously, like, uh, okay, I shouldn't have made this so large, but your, your timeline would branch out into a different number of possibilities, right? You could go here, you could go there, you could make this decision, you could go there. Obviously, this is like uh, just a couple, but you could have millions and millions, of, well, I should probably scoot over a bit more, but you could have millions and millions of different routes to go. This is how I thought about time. Time in relationship to free will. So you're born and you have a number of different routes that you can go throughout time. Um, and yeah, I mean, to me, I just feel like that's common sense. Like there's a lot of things that we could do, um, but it, it doesn't mean that we do them. So, you know, these are all the possibilities of what we could do, but we might actually, you know, go here. That might actually be the way of life that we choose. I'm coloring outside the lines there, like three-year-old. So my thinking has always been, if we do have free will and God is outside of time and he can see all of these different possibilities here, um, that he would know the possibilities, but he wouldn't know where we're going to end up that we're going to end up here. And the reason I say that is because if he did know, so this is where it gets interesting because this is where my uh, mom says, no, God knows we start here and he knows this exact path that we are going to take to get here, to get to where we're going to be. He only sees one timeline. He doesn't see a million different timelines of what could be, but he sees only one timeline. That's what my mom thinks. I think it makes more sense to me if God would see all that could happen, but um, and he doesn't know 
where you know this is where we're going to end up um and so this is this is the dilemma because we start because i said okay but you you do know mother i i, I say that sometimes call her mother instead of mom i said you do know mother that if god knows where we start off and he knows exactly where we're going to go and how we're going to die and everything that's going to happen then he would also know if we are going to choose heaven or choose hell so why would god if he does know the one timeline and he knows before a person is even born or as he's creating a person or whatever why would god do that knowing that just hypothetically speaking that the person will choose hell that the person will choose against god and he will choose to rebel against god why would god create that person knowing he's going to rebel against him and that his child you know uh will have to burn in hell for all eternity and be tortured for all eternity and uh i'm like that doesn't sound like a loving god to me it also sounds like calvinism and predestinationism it does not sound like free will free will would sound like if we were you know born and god did not know the, the, the where we would end up we're gonna hear here here you know this is like let's say this is let's say this is hell and this is you know we chose to be christian at the end of our death and we chose agnostic or we died in a rock climbing accident somewhere in the middle east <laughs> I, don't, I don't know um but all of these possibilities so it would make sense to me if he could see this but he did not know we were going to end up where we were going to end up because if he did then we wouldn't technically have free will but if that's the case if god does not know where we're going to end up when we die then it doesn't make him all knowing and this was my mom's problem because then he's then she says well then is he god because if he doesn't know where we're going to end up when we die um, then he's not God because God by definition is all-knowing and I so I said well that you know and then it just went back and forth I mean it was a heated discussion for a couple of hours well it was a couple of hours over a couple of days so and I think we're still in the middle of this discussion because I think it's a great discussion to be had because I don't think people realize how many people say okay God is all-knowing um, you know what does that all-knowing entail does that all-knowing entail he knows all things that could happen or he knows exactly what will happen because in my thinking if god knows exactly what will happen then we don't have free will it's all calvinism predestinationism and that is that is a thing my, i think my mom even pulled out a scripture verse that said uh, that people were predestined that people were predestined or god foreknew and i was like mom you do know that that's the bible verse that people use for calvinism and predestinationism but that's a different uh topic of discussion so the, the, the dilemma here is, you know, does God know exactly where we will end up, which is predestinationism and Calvinism, meaning Calvinism is some people are meant to go to heaven and some people are meant to go to hell. And God created the people knowing that these people are going to go to heaven and these people are going to go to hell. And they don't have a choice in the matter because that's just how their life is. That is, that is how it's going to be. And I'm like, Dad, I, I, I didn't know. <laughs> no, I mean, if that's the truth, that's just, who would want to follow a, a spiritual path or religion that does that? I just, I, I can't fathom that. So, yes, um, as if I haven't already explained it enough, does God know exactly what will happen or does God know what could happen? What encompasses the all-knowing? And here's the thing, if God does not know, right, if God does not know where we'll end up and he knows what could happen, all the possibilities, that would leave us with free will. And that would make, and to me, that would give God more of a incentive that when he sends someone to earth or creates someone, you know, there's a number of different Bible verses that uh, even talks about him sending, or not talks about him, but insinuates sending people to earth uh, because they were actually created in heaven before sent to earth. Different topic of discussion. It would make more sense to me if he sent them to earth or created them on earth, whatever the case may be, and didn't know what was going to happen because, and that gives him more of an incentive to pursue them, to, to tell them how much, uh, you know, he loves them, to allow that pursuit of God and man. 
But if he knows exactly what's going to happen, why would he need to pursue anybody? Why would he need to uh, show his love for anybody? Because he knows, oh, at the end of their lives, they're going to choose, you know, heaven or they're going to choose hell. So it's it's already there. Uh, and, and so it would make sense for God, a more loving God, to not know. But if he doesn't know, is he still God? I told my dad uh, when we were having another heated discussion involved with my dad, uh, heated dis- they're a heated discussion. They're not arguments or fights or debates. They're heated discussions. <laughs> they're heated discussions. But uh, what I told my dad is I said, you know, if this is the case, I think we need to redefine uh, what all-knowing means, what an all-knowing God means, because this could, this could change a lot about, you know, God being all-knowing and even loving and all. And I'm sure that, you know, this is a dilemma between free will and all-knowing, but how many other, I mean, there's there's definitely other uh, dilemmas uh, where, you know, there could, there could be dilemmas with all of, all of the omni, omnipresent, omnipowerful, omni, you know, all, all of them. So, yeah, and one more thing uh, in in a book that I've been reading lately, uh, this this subject got brought up, which is why this whole topic of conversation brought up because my parents gave me this book called Disappointed by God. Started reading it, uh, have been disappointed by the book. <laughs> but in the book, uh, this whole thing was brought up that uh, you know God, when He made humanity was taking a huge risk because the implications of free will is that they have the decision to choose and God cannot intervene with that and he cannot know. And so it was a massive, and he quoted a number of theologians and philosophers in the book. Uh, one of them I do, I know, you know, Soren Kierkegaard uh, said that it was God's greatest risk. Uh, in creation because he knew with free will he couldn't control them he he couldn't make decisions for them and so he didn't know how it was going to go when he created humanity but that's how the whole topic of conversation got brought up that you know God making humans was a huge risk because he would not know what they were going to choose if they were going to choose him he didn't know it was it was kind of like should I create a creature with free will? Which that's what the book says, but it's interesting to me because we know that angels have free will according to the Bible because angels were able to decide if they were going to fall with Lucifer um, or if they were going to stay with God. So we know that angels have free will, so God already created a being with free will before he created humans. So what's the difference between angels and humans? Because even in Genesis, he calls angels sons of God. And in the New Testament, he calls us sons of God. And so, hold on, I'm just ranting now. So that's that. That is the dilemma at hand. Uh, so, you know, what do you think? Where, where, where does that end up? How do you define all-knowing? Do you think all-knowing is God knows everything that could happen, but he doesn't know what will happen, and so does that make him God? Or do you think all-knowing means God knows exactly where uh, we're going to end up from birth to death, uh, which to me sounds like uh, predestinationism and Calvinism. Uh, that you know, And why would he create someone knowing, uh, hypothetically speaking, that they are going to hell? and he, he's not going to do anything about it. So uh, these are the questions that we face uh, in 2019 in my household. <laughs> not my household, my parents' household, because I still live with them. So that's it for today. Let me know what you think about all this down in the comments. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you misfits in the next one. Peace! I got that summer.